Hey, everybody, and welcome to this week's episode of the Pertinier Outdoors podcast. I uh, appreciate all of you tuning in, and I uh, hope you're having a good January. It's uh, it's hard to believe the month's almost over. It's the 24th. Uh, here we are, and uh, I wanted to get a guy on this week, uh, Jim Hanley. He is a uh, professional charter captain on uh, Lake Erie. I've uh, been fishing his whole life. Uh, pretty pretty cool guy. I've gotten to know of him and about him over the last three or four days, and uh, that kind of led me to wanting to get him on here. Uh, the last show I did, um, I think the only show of this, of this new year, well, maybe the second show of this new year, but I had uh, Kevin on from the Deer Hunter podcast, and we really didn't talk anything about hunting. We didn't talk anything about hunting. We just talked about um, just kind of current current events, topics, being aware of what's going on around you um, when it comes to uh, initiatives, environmental um, health regulations. We kind of talked about all that gamut there. Um, some of my thoughts on some of those things, some of his thoughts on some of those things. And one of them was talking about renewable energy. And one of the things that popped up, uh, on my radar in the last week or so was, uh, was a wind project, uh, with some wind turbines that they're talking about installing on Lake Erie. Um, and as I dug further into that, uh, I started reaching out to some friends. I've got a couple buddies, uh, one in particular that I went to high school with, uh, Paul Shermer, uh, he is a charter captain on Erie and Ontario. And uh, so Paul, I reached out to him to see if he had heard of this uh, and what his thoughts and some of his um, some of his fellow charter captains, what their thoughts are on it. And uh, very quickly got myself into uh, discussions uh, that, that this is very much a concern um, about the lake and about the, the future of the uh, of the habitat there and of, of that resource. Uh, if a project like this was to happen. So Paul and, and all of the captains that he's, um, I don't know if you want to call not partners, but uh, they're of a like uh, interest in mind. I'm, I don't know, I'm sure they have some sort of a, I'm trying, I'm, I'm losing the word, um, but I'm sure there's an organization of them, you know, charter captains uh, that kind of all work together for legislation and things or whatever. Uh, anyway, the, uh, where I was going with that is uh, he led me, I said, well, who's the guy uh, to talk to? Do you guys have somebody who's kind of leading this charge? And, um, and that was Jim Hanley. So he put me in touch with Jim. Uh, I wanted to get him on here to, uh, to talk a little bit about this, but he, uh, ahead of me having him on, he told me that he had done uh, a few hours of uh, radio with one of the, uh, with one of the radio talk radio hosts here in Buffalo, um, Tom Bowerly, who is on WBEN. Uh, he did about two and a half to three hours with him on his show right around the beginning of the year. Um, I think it was maybe the third or fourth of January. And I'll put those links to those three hours in here. I think there was a lot of really good dialogue to that as well. So if you find yourself more interested in this topic um, and hearing what other constituents around the area are thinking uh, about this, I would definitely challenge you to take a few minutes to listen to those uh, to those few hours. You can listen to it on the Odyssey app. Um, that's the, the radio station, um, where you can get that podcast, um, of the radio show. So I'll, I'll put those in the bio, but, um, it just, it just got my mind turning about all this. And, uh, as we head into the new year, I'm certainly not going to be, uh, this is not going to be a podcast where all we do is talk about these sort of things. But right now in the winter time, I often find myself kind of hitting the reset button and taking a step back and thinking about what's important to me and what's important, um, happening around me. And, uh, the last few years, it's, it's definitely become, um, matters of, of the environment. It's become matters of politics. Uh, and now with, with everything that's gone on with COVID it's become matters of, you know, health protocol and, and, uh, the way that things are handled. So these, are, these things are important to me. Um, I'm not saying that I'm right. These are my opinions. They're my beliefs. And I, I love having d dialogue and discussion with people, um, about their thoughts and, and on this whole thing, the interesting piece is, you know, like I said to Kevin in the podcast last week, I have a hard time finding people that are not kind of on the same side of the fence as I am, um, or thinking, thinking like I am about these things. So it's, it's very interesting. Uh, typically, you know, it, it is difficult to find people on the other side of a spectrum. Um, and I, if there's anybody out there listening to this podcast and that listens to this and hears some of the thoughts and maybe thinks otherwise, you know, we don't have to have a public conversation on the podcast, but I'd love to hear your perspective on it. If you think that something like this, uh, putting wind turbines in Lake Erie, if you think that would be a good idea, 
I just like to understand why. Um, I think that's that's it. I'm not looking for any confrontation. I'm not looking for you know back and forth or to say that you're a bad person or for you to tell me that I'm a bad person. I just like to understand why you think it would be good to do something like this in a in a precious resource like the lake. Um, again, I'm not against renewable energy. I'm not against electric vehicles. I'm not against um, trying to move forward to uh, to reduce the amount of, of carbon that we're emitting and the amount of pollution we're putting into our environment. I this It's this very unique line that I think a lot of people have a hard time with um, that you either have to be one thing or the other. I'm both. You know, I'm... I, I'm somebody who cares so much about the environment and wants to make it better and wants to do my part. But on the same breath, I think we have to look at it and say, are the things that we're trying to do to stop this or curtail it or make it better, are they actually things that will make it better? And I, I think that that's a, that's a rational, that's a realistic thought process that I think we all need to put ourselves into with all things. Um, you know, how we're, how we're handling our everyday life, how we do things uh, with our family and our kids and, um, you may have noticed that I've been, uh, we have as a whole, as a group of guys, uh, with Pertinier Outdoors have been way less active on social media. And I'm, you know, I'm really questioning myself in the health that comes from a lot of, um, a lot of that with social media. I've, I've made a cognizant effort to try to stop being on my phone so much to stop, uh, you know, especially when I'm home, uh, with the family, I'm just trying to focus on, on here and now and be in the present and uh, it's very difficult to do that with all the things that are coming at us every day and, and how easy it is to get sucked into your phone and scrolling through Instagram or Facebook. It's, it's really difficult. Um, but I, I, I think it's important. And I think it's important to, uh, you know, go back to the, to the roots of sitting around with your kids at the dinner table and saying what the best part of your day was and, and having fun with that and cleaning up food after they throw it all over the damn house and et cetera, et cetera. Um, those are my thoughts. That's my feelings. That's kind of where I'm at today. Uh, I did not put a podcast out last week because I was just, I was just worn down. I was tired. I didn't think that I would have been a fun person to listen to. Um, and in the end, uh, this is just a podcast that I do for fun. And, uh, if I'm not in the mood to do it, uh, I'm just not going to put a, put an episode out, but, uh, but here we are this week with, uh, with our episode. I hope you enjoy this. And, uh, I don't want to, uh, belabor this intro much longer I want to get right into it but this week uh, this weekend is uh, just to give a quick plug um, this weekend we are uh, I know I'm going to go Friday to uh, to the outdoor show in Syracuse uh, be hanging out in the booth with the hunt works with the guys there um, they're gonna have a big display of uh, tree stands and box blinds and ground blinds and uh, climbing sticks and all sorts of stuff they're gonna have a nice setup there it sounds like uh, so I think I'm gonna be there on Friday I may make an appearance Sunday. I'm not sure. Um, I think dad might go up on Sunday. Um, I was hoping to God we were going to have a home playoff game on Sunday, which we now know we're not going to. So my day is open, but uh, not sure if I'll be just hanging here with the family or what I'll be doing. So that's the gig. Hope to, if you, if you do happen to go to the outdoor show on Friday, pop in, say, Hey, um, I'll have my podcast stuff and, and uh, be uh, probably recording a couple there at the show. So, Thank you everybody for listening. And as always, um, if you could share, share these out, you know, whether it's physically sharing them, uh, anywhere that you might want to share, whether it be Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, whatever, whatever it is that you do, um, or just tell a friend if you find a, a conversation or you're enjoying the show. Um, we appreciate that. And any feedback is, uh, is, is necessary. I, I would love to hear what people's thoughts are. If you like me talking about these things and having these discussions, I'd like to do more of them. Um, I'd like to talk more about uh, about the renewable energy uh, going that route. I, again, I'm in support of it. Um, I just think we have to be realistic and, and understand uh, what we are trying to achieve uh, and what type of uh, electricity is needed to do what we're doing. I think that's just vitally important uh, to all of us moving forward uh, with this effort. Um, we got to be realistic about what we're doing and how we're going to get there. So that's that. Thank you so much. Enjoy my discussion with Jim and uh, what I always say at the end, just keep fading them. I have no voice left from last night. Yeah, there was a lot of screaming going on at my house. Oh, my God. When we scored, when, when Josh threw that TD pass in the end zone there, I was on Zoom call with my, my daughter. No, like a FaceTime, whatever, with my daughter. And uh, 
North Carolina, and we both screamed so loud that uh, it was uh, blew my voice out. And then never choose, never choose heads. I mean, never choose tails. It's ah, just, tails never fails, like, though. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> ah, it's just, I don't even know. I mean, my yeah. wife was in tears. She was an emotional wreck oh. the whole game. I mean, I get nervous too, yeah. but she was a mess. And uh, yeah. Mm. I mean, we're we're dancing around the living room twice in oh, in know. a matter of you know that two minutes. We're we're dancing around the living room, screaming, hoping we don't wake the kids up. Yep. Oh. Oh well. Yeah. Oh well. It's right. I mean, it's just a football game at the end of the day. It's just a football game. Yeah. yeah. It is. But yeah. it's uh, I don't know. I like I said to I said to Sarah last night. I go. I guess the one thing that I go away from this game with is that we now know we do have a legitimate quarterback and somebody who can play on that stage because, um, you know, we, those last two years in the, in the playoffs, he just looked like a fish out of water in those big game yeah. moments, you know? So he, yep, yep. he showed up and we've got a legit team and a quarterback that hopefully starts to get some respect that he deserves. That's for sure. Know? Trying to get rid of this shine off these glasses. You're okay. I don't really wear glasses, but I can't see up close. So. <laughs> Yeah, it's hell, anyway. it's hell to get old, isn't it? Yep, yep. All right, so we'll uh, – I already hit the record button, but I just – this is – so just to kind of give you a rundown, um, we just talked for a few minutes on the on the phone the other day, but um, right. Jim Hanley is the guest with us here today for the podcast. Jim is uh, Jim is a charter captain, uh, mainly on Lake Erie. Do you do Lake Ontario as well? No, Lake Erie only now. Okay, in my in my, in my twilight years here. Okay, so you but you have fished er, or Ontario a lot. Uh, I would well, I had the TV show for eighteen years, so I fished all over the country and shot shows everywhere. So yeah, did you? So yeah. well, let uh, so you're on here today. The, the primary reason you and I have connected is over this uh, over the windmill prod. Excuse me, industrial wind industrial turbine. turbine. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, it's funny because I've been saying turbines all all weekend since you and I talked, and then I just go yeah. and say the the M word. But yeah, the yep. the wind turbine project that they're proposing and pushing hard for the state is uh, out on Lake Erie, which has uh, caught my attention. Um, and I and I called my friend Paul Shermer, who's also a, a charter captain, and was curious if it was something on the radar of uh, of your guys's group of of charter captains that fish this lake for a living and uh he said oh absolutely and he goes i'm not the guy to talk to but jim hanley is so hence yeah. you and i have connected and uh excited to get together with you just to kind of talk a little bit about uh what's going on with this proposed project but uh yeah, yeah i appreciate the opportunity uh, any 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 way to get the word out is really important right now yep no doubt so i guess you started to kind of give a little rundown what's your what's your history and your background um with fishing with the lake and, uh, uh, well, I, I grew up on Lake Erie, so I'm going to be 70 next month. Uh, and so I grew up on the lake watching it go from being a polluted mess to absolutely, uh, you know, this pristine, well, pristine is probably a tough word, but this beautiful body of water now that's so prolific, you know, walleye fishing is unbelievable. Bass fishing is, you know, unbelievable. One of my customers tied the New York state record at 8.4 pounds a few years ago um you know catching limits of walleye in just a few hours it's unbelievable so i've seen it go from the worst to the best and we just don't want to see it degrade anymore by putting uh industrial turbines in and digging up the bottom of the lake so that, yeah. that's my new mission but anyway i started started professional fishing in 1978 uh my first bass tournament i ever fished i drew bill dance for a partner so you can imagine oh my young, god uh, you know, guy like me, I was in my late twenties and I drew Billy Bob for a partner and I couldn't ask for a better partner. He has been a friend ever since. And, uh, uh, that was the same year I started guiding. So 44 years later and, uh, you know, 18 years of having the TV show and, uh, I was on empire sports network and outdoor channel and everything else. So I've been in the fishing business for 44 years now. So that's, that, that's my credentials. Wow. That's awesome. Yeah. And so yeah. you're somebody who certainly has seen, um, and I'm young, I'm 34. Um, yeah. I'm f originally from Rochester, moved out here to Western New York to, um, lived in West Seneca for four years, three, four years, and then moved out here to Wyoming County. Um, but Lake Erie has, you know, was introduced to me later in my, in my life, you know, as far as yeah. it was probably 24, 25 before I ever 
got out on the water there and uh it's a pretty special place and uh to have it you know a 30 minute drive from my house to be able to be on one of the most um sought after you know fishing fisheries in in the world is uh is a pretty beautiful yep. thing as well as lake ontario right here too so um yep. i i find it interesting because my perspective is so short term um somebody like yourself who's literally made a living on that body of water and I listened to the, and I encourage, and I'll put in link links in the in the show notes to the, uh, you know, you did almost three hours with uh, with Tom Bowerly on WBEN uh, beginning right. of this month. I'll put some links in there, but there was some really, you know, I don't want to try to recreate that conversation because there was a lot yeah. of really good interaction with callers and stuff. But well, you know what? It was so popular. I saw Tom the other night at the 1791 meeting. That's a gun rights group. And he said, we got to do it again. And I go, what, when, like six months? He's no, in the next week or two. Okay, he good. said, it's so hot topic right now that we're going to do it another, do another one. And we're going to go in studio. We're going to have some of our people, uh, you know, we, we are um, citizens against wind turbines in Lake Erie, a Facebook group. And you can join there and get all the information and whatnot. But it became so popular. He said in all the years he's been doing radio, he did not have any, opposition callers in that show everybody is against them so that ought to tell you the problem is is we're fighting we're fighting city hall we have local yokel hokel uh, our new governor who's been starting to call people in favor we've got crystal people stokes he's a democrat uh, who represents uh some of the uh areas near the city and uh the sierra club that's the, it, you talk about a bunch of hypocrites the sierra club are supposed to be for protecting the environment. They want to put them in the lake. Yeah. And as our conversation goes, I can explain what will happen to the bottom of the lake when you put turbines that are going to be either another time and a half taller or twice as tall as the M&T Plaza in downtown Buffalo. Yeah. <laughs> and for anybody yeah. who is in Buffalo, you know, I mean, I, it's so funny because you hear these discussions and then you start to like think about the image of that and – you're you and it's spot on i mean i was out in uh i'm out here in wyoming county and up if you're running uh 78 or sorry 77 going from yeah. you know way south all the way up through heading towards pembroke and corfu or towards the thruway you can see that's got to be 25 miles um yeah. to the city of buffalo and you can see the you can see that tower the the m&t oh, yeah. the m&t plaza building that is it sticks out on a even on a fairly cloudy day you can see that yep. so just gives you perspective of the size of these and i live in windmill country i mean our town has a large wind farm and um i'm i'm kind of i'm not totally against wind energy but i think once we right. start talking about putting wind turbines in a fresh body of water that yeah, supplies right. clean water for people totally to drink yep. it's a different discussion yep. you know there's yep. there's certainly um, sad stories about landowners who were not fortunate enough to be able to put wind turbines on their property. And now they're literally hundreds of feet from their home and someone else, their neighbor is profiting off of that. Like I can understand those stories and those frustrations. Yep. Um, you know, in my, you know, I live about a mile from the nearest turbine. Um, but they're right up on the hill and I can see them and it's, sure. there's a, there's a, there's a unique beauty to them because it's like modern technology with sure. country living. But then on the flip side, there's the downsides that come with it, with the noise and with the, you know, maybe what we don't know um, can come from, you know, having these basically electric producing probes, you know, all over around you, where you live. You know, what is the impact of that? I don't know. Yep. Um, yep. But that's all stuff that you don't think about uh, um, until you start actually kind of exp expanding your mind and thinking, you know, we only think about what maybe the positives can be from these things, but you don't think about what the negatives can be. Yep, exactly. Yep. So um, I want to go back to, to the lake um, because I think okay. that's where I want to start is you, you have that unique perspective as somebody who has spent the majority of your life making a living on that body of water and what you, how you, you kind of quickly mentioned how it has changed, but let's go back to, to how, why the lake was as bad as it was and what the issues were there with the lake back sure. when it was a yeah. steel town 
Yeah. Well, you know, it was multiple things, you know, it was uncontrolled uh, dumping of phosphorus or, uh, you know, laundry detergents and whatnot that quickly you trafficated the lake. And I remember, you know, this, this is, so I'm about 10 years old. So you're talking early sixties. I was walking the beach and so much dead vegetation would, would end up on the beach that it would make layers of this crusty stuff. So vegetation actually started growing on the beach. And around September, I started crawling through it, and I found a pumpkin and three butternut squash growing on the beach of Lake Erie. Oh I took those home. My mother, like, was going to give me a whooping because she thought I swiped them from some farmer's, you know, uh, field, and actually they were growing on the beach. So th- that that's how bad it was. I mean, you literally would walk out as kids. We would still swim in the lake. The water was brown. It stunk. Uh, you know, a few fish were caught. Uh, you would walk through what I, what I could have just, it would be like looking into an outhouse that you would, you would walk through to get out to, to clean water. It was unbelievable. And just seaweed growing everywhere and whatnot. So they started cleaning up. There's still a lot going in there. And part of that residue. And I, the only person who came back at me about what, what we talked about was I'm also a diver. And when you dive in Lake Erie, you will see, you know, everything is pretty much gray when you're at, at depths. And you will see, like, these shimmering, like, pockets around. And they're, they're where all of that former pollution has settled. So you can literally take your arm and stick it down into these areas that are, like, sediment of whatever nasty stuff was at the bottom of the lake and you can stick your arm down there. I mean, if you could dive into it, you probably could, but uh, it's just all those layers are laying there. And when they take these turbines and, and they don't drill into the lake, they have like the, they're based on some giant suction cup uh, thing. I'll send you some pictures later on. So if you want to post them, yeah. um, they will adhere to the bottom and uh, disturb some of that. Now here's the, here's the, the part. All right. So their proposal is to put, 50, 750 to 1,000 foot turbines in Lake Erie. Now, you can put them down to the bottom of the lake. That's fine. You know what? But where does the power go? Well, here's the rub. That power has to run to shore by a cable. And some some town along Lake Erie who's now in favor of what we're doing is going to give in because they're going to get a lot of money for those cables coming to shore. They do what's called jet plowing. All right, so in modern day technology, if you're a fan of TV and you see the car shows or you see somebody, I, I, I believe there's CRC machines. I'm not really sure, but they're a water jet. Like CNC. And I water, think they say it call them CNC, right? I don't CNC, know. CNC, whatever, whatever yeah. it is. I, I apologize. But anyway, the force of that water can cut through metal. Okay. So now what they're going to do is they're going to take that same technology and they're going to cut a, a channel for each one of those uh, power cables to go to shore because it can't just lay on the surface. It has to be under uh, buried or in a channel. Can you imagine the destruction to spawning beds, uh, plant life, uh, uh, bait life, anything else that comes along from that area? And some of those are going to be out several miles offshore. The destruction from that alone, that anybody who has any idea. So what we're doing is we're, we're – the the uh, uh, civilian is looking at that that symbolism over substance that oh look at that turbine out there it's so beautiful it's so soothing and it's saving us uh, the, the atmosphere from all that pollution from diesel and gasoline and whatnot but down under the surface where everything matters is the destruction of, of Lake Erie it will destroy that lake and I mean you think there there, there has been no environmental impact studies. There's been no um, uh, research in the, what they're going to do to the bottom of the lake. It's let's get those turbines in quick before before the small but vocal group from the town of Evans raises too many people's hair on the back of their necks and make them angry, which we're really trying to do. And it's working because we have thousands and thousands of members and also the 1791 society with 35,000 members is back at us now. Yeah. So when we start fighting against, uh, uh, the governor of New York and some of the state senators, uh, another one, uh, Sean Ryan, you know, a local guy who shows up at all the fishing meetings because he's fishing's buddy. Oh, I have no idea. They don't know anything about what's going on. Yeah, right, Sean. Yeah. Same thing with Ryan Higgins, too. They're ignorant to what's going on. 
So they got a fence post sticking up their butt because they're sitting on the fence. Right. And uh, they're, they're, they're going to get caught in this, and it's not going to work out really well because the opposition is growing every day. Yeah, I mean, when you start to take a step back and think about cutting – channels oh. in the bottom of a lake and let just take take the fact of the uh, take away the 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 pollution that we know is settled into the bottom of that lake yeah. and you know from personal experience take away that it doesn't it just it doesn't make sense that if we're trying right. to protect the environment to do this sort right. of stuff to the environment right. and to uh to a unique and cherished body of water you know we're not talking about some small reservoir that's mm-hmm. you know I think what is it Ontario Reservoir up in in, in Niagara County? You know, there's there's right. different you know energy. There was a guy that called into the show and talked about that, but we're 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 messing with something that is pristine. It's it's working its way back from being abused, and why would we jump yep. right back into it and start abusing it? But you know, the understanding the way that that lake works and how important some of those those reefs are and some of those areas where you have natural buildup of stone where where the streams come out from. You know, whether it be yep. 18 Mile Creek or you go down towards uh, the cat where the cat comes out, all of those things are very fragile. And you start yep. messing with that stuff, it impacts yep. life, it impacts nature. And, um, you know, I think it's it's something I've been, I was thinking a lot about this after I was listening to, the, to your discussion from the radio interview. And, uh, you know, a, as, a, as a young person, um, I'm only 34, but, you know, I've, I've, I'm growing up, you know, I have kids, I have sure. a career, you start paying attention to politics more, you start looking at the way that the world oh, yeah. turns. Um, when I was, when I'm even in my 20s, you know, you have a, you have a, a rose-colored glasses look of, of the way that things work. You know, everybody's sure. trying to do what's best for everybody, and this is all going to be good, and these organizations have all the right things in, in, in their mind. You know, you bring up the Sierra Club, it's like, they have a marketing arm that makes everybody feel like they're, you know, they want the best for the planet and the best for everything. Yep. But then you see something like this and it's like, this just does not jive. It doesn't make exactly. sense. And, right. and I think there's just this massive push um, for all of this renewable energy and a complete disregard for what these things are doing to change the landscape that are, they're not permanent. You know, these no, nothing's permanent, you know, we'll never see, the, the true impact of these things in our lifetimes for sure. No, but, no. but still, you know, it, we all want to leave it better than we found it. And are we really doing what's best for the environment to do this stuff? And, right. I, and I, I just and, don't and think it, that you can argue that. Right. And exactly what you're saying, well, I'm going to be 70. So I, I got another, you know, I'm running my trip. So I got another four or five years maybe. Uh, that my health will be good enough to be responsible enough to take people out. I'm doing it for you. Mm -hmm. I'm doing it for my kids and my grandkids because this is a fight that's worth fighting for me, and I will do whatever it takes. I mean, if if it comes down to where they're starting to put those things out, you'll find me chained to one of those blades, brother. (laughs) I mean, I I will do that. I will make myself famous by doing it, whatever it takes. Um, And if we have to, uh, you know, there's just, there's just so many things that are wrong about this, even to the fact if it comes down to a thing called the Jones Act was, I think, uh, brought up in like 1915, where foreign vessels cannot transport um, products from the United States into ports. I mean, it sounds crazy, but there is one there. The problem is, is the Sierra Club and all these uh, left wing groups are recruiting the unions because the unions are being told so many jobs. Oh, they put these turbines, it's going to be thousands. No, there's not going to be thousands of jobs. There's going to be a couple jobs when they put them up and that's going to be part-time job because once one's up, what are you going to do? Have two or three guys that are maintaining the ones that are leaking the oil into the lake and the blades. Let me real real quick. We're talking about pollution because this just came to me. I'm doing a piece tomorrow with, uh, Senator Chris, uh, Congressman Chris Jacobs, and we're doing a piece about uh, all the plastics that are going into the Great Lakes, even from your toothpaste. You know, your toothpaste actually has those little micro beads in mm-hmm. them. So when you scrub your teeth, the fish are eating them. They're catching fish with these accumulations of plastics and micro beads in them. Yeah, face washes, turbine, things like that. Yeah, 
Right. Wind turbines disintegrate as they turn. Now, you're, if you're talking 1,000 foot turbines, you're talking blades that are going to be just absolutely massive. And as they spin, the front part of those blades, and the blades are not recyclable. So anytime you see the pictures of turbine blades, they're being buried because that's the only thing you can do with them because you can't recycle them because they're made out of composites and whatnot. The front part of those blades are emitting little pieces of plastics or, or composite or whatever it is going in the water, and the fish eat them. How do the fish eat them? Because the minnows think that they're something to eat, so the minnow eats them, and then the bass eats the minnow, goes into them, or the walleye eats the minnow or whatever, and then you eat that walleye. Mm-hmm. And that stuff is in your, your system too. So these are the things that, that the symbolism, once again, over substance of seeing something spinning out there is, is doing you some good. It's not, it's destroying the environment. Yeah. Yeah. So I was just, I was just looking up the Jones act um, to yeah. see exactly, you know, what that I have, to, I have to read about the whole damn thing, but yeah, it's, um, you know what it, it, it's, 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 it, that's kind of in the weeds, Yeah, but it's just that we're, you know, we're, we're looking for all the things that, that the hypocrisy is coming at us and saying this is a good thing. Well, if the unions are really unions and really pro-union, then why would you violate one of your uh, a sanctity of your brotherhood that are on those ships? Right. So it's, you know, it's just those things, those, those, those just minute little details that we need to accumulate and build up our, our case against this. Yeah. And I, and I think the, you know, that point and, and everybody is, is promised these things, right? Everybody's promised, well, you get tax breaks. Well, you get, yep. you know, the, the unions are going to have a lot of, of work to do, you know, and that stuff, it's all short, short term, you know? So yep. here, so where, where, where I live, um, we had no town tax for, I don't know if it was maybe 10 years uh, from when the first windmills were installed, uh, wind turbines were installed here in, in uh, Sheldon. And, uh, yep. Now that tax break is expired, so now we're back paying town taxes again, and those you know they're still here and they're still standing yep. in our landscapes. You know, here, here here's a quick point. While we're on this point, why are they putting them in the lake? Well, we've heard of a bunch of different things. Uh, you know, the the wind is better, they turn better. You know why? Because it's free. Because New York State local municipalities own, I think, fifteen hundred feet off of shore. The state owns the rest of it, or federal. They put those in. They have to pay any. They have to pay any tax. They have to pay any rent or anything because it's going down the center of the lake. Mm-hmm. So imagine that fifty of these monstrosities from Buffalo to past Dunkirk. Dunkirk is where it starts getting real deep, so they can't go, you know, much deep, much farther than that. But it's free. So yep. the government is just just lying to you. And if these things weren't government subsidized, you think they would bother because the efficiency of them is just not what everybody thinks it is. Yeah. And, um, yeah. So then going spot on and then going back to the, to the jobs piece, um, that it's all again, a short term thing. Um, we, we look at all this stuff and it's short term, uh, gains for long-term pains, if you want to put it that way, because yeah, there you go. you're right. going to, you're going to build all of this and you're going to have jobs that are needed. You know, there's going to be people that are going to have to build these things. Um, but that will, the job will eventually be done. And then you will just need a few people to maintain it. Um, and yep. you know, we see that I, I have one of my close friends works for the wind, um, system here, uh, in Sheldon and they, they manage all, you know, kind of this whole, region out here in Wyoming County and down into uh, uh, a little bit of Allegheny, I think. And, you know, I haven't talked to him about this, you know, particularly because this has kind of become a hot button thing for me over the last week. Um, But I know for him, it's kind of, uh, you know, at some point that contract's going to run up and he probably isn't going to have a job um, because the company is going to have to make a decision whether they want to renew that contract or not. And I'm not quite sure that they're going to want to do that. Um, Right. So, you know, these things, they, they don't last forever. The, these programs, these tax breaks, these incentives, and these companies, to your point, and I don't know if you're um, very well-versed in the numbers or if you have somebody else from your group that would be, you know, better to have a separate conversation on, um, but exactly, you know, how, you know, these, the majority of these projects are subsidized with government money. Um, yeah, and when yeah. it actually comes down to paying for themselves, they they have a very hard time doing it. I'm not going to say that they don't because I don't know that. Um, and I don't have numbers in front of me, but the, uh, 
you know, they're not, you know, and it's so funny. You become aware of this stuff. We've had a couple really nice, like high pressure days with these brutal cold temperatures we have right now. Those blades aren't turning. And it's like, and you only pay attention to that when it's something that you have, you know, interest in. So you drive by, I, I literally drive by these things and live around them every single day. And I don't count the times that they aren't running, but when you really start paying attention to it, they're not generating energy when they're not running. No, they're not. And, they're uh, not. You know, while you're on that point, not to interrupt you, but while you're on that point, mm-hmm. um, imagine Lake Erie. Now, it's not going to freeze this year. It's I, I, I live right near the water. So you don't think it'll it freeze day. this year? No. It, I mean, it's freezing somewhat every day that it's cold. Yeah. But as soon as we get a little wind, it breaks it up. So it's not going to be ice covered the way it was. I mean, it might, it might. Like last year, it froze real late, and then it was gone right away. Yeah. But I think it was five years ago, six years ago, we had ice that was 44 inches thick. Holy shit. And ice will destroy things. I mean, there used to be old docks back in Buffalo. It was a heyday. All those concrete docks just get shoved all over the place. What happens? There's a couple things here. What happens when we get Buffalo storms? Like uh, two years ago, it knocked a hole in Donnelly's Wall which has been there for 200 years. It took off the front face of the Horseshoe Reef Lighthouse. What What is, for gone. people for people that aren't familiar with the harbor and the Buffalo area, yes. What what is Donnelly's Wall and what is Donnelly's the lighthouse? Donnelly's Wall is the break, yeah, it's the break wall that's right in front of Erie Basin Marina. So the Buffalo Harbor comes out right there. Mm-hmm. That wall's been there forever. There's a big hole in it now. And also on the end of it that they built for the um, common turn for their nesting was destroyed after New York State spent millions of dollars of redoing that for some birds um what got destroyed okay so you got these violent winds uh i mean there's a million things Uh, the the, the, the shipwrecks there's there's been no there's two thousand shipwrecks in lake erie 375 been found they're going to put a turbine down on a on a grave site and whatnot but anyway so imagine all these winds and these turbines out there by themselves okay what happened in Texas this past year, or when they had their power, I think it was last year, yeah, they had last the power year. problem because everything was turbines. They were spraying them because they got iced up, so they were spraying them with uh, de-icer. You're going to go out on Lake Erie and spray de-icer on Lake Erie on a frozen uh, frozen body of water with a helicopter. What is that? De-icer is not going to pollute the, the lake? <laughs> right. you, and seriously, I know. these are the things that are just so absurd that, that the symbolism over substance is what, they really want, and I just wrote down your term there: short-term gains for long-term pains. I, 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 if you don't mind, I'm going to use that thing yeah. for for a while. That was really great. Um, so, so the the winds it, we, when we see hoax, which is a restaurant along Lake Erie, uh, covered with ice from these from these violent storms. We've had a couple of what? Remember the Bills game with the. 60 mile an hour winds. Yeah, it yeah. destroys stuff. You think those turbines out there? They're gonna they're, they're gonna shut them down when they're right. when they're uh, the, they're the wind is blowing like that. You think it's not, not a chance of those not getting knocked over and leaking leaking hundreds of gallons of oil into the into the water? I mean, I I, I know I'm kind of all over the place right now, but these are the things that that we try to portray to people in a conversation. Sometimes, you know, you talk to somebody for five minutes. It's really hard to do that because right. they're the ones who say, Oh, they're just so peaceful. I go out and I watch them and it just makes me just makes me feel so good because, you know, we're saving the environment and we're not using that, but you're destroying the environment is what you're doing. So Yeah. It's it's uh it is I mean, it's hard to have a conversation about this stuff and it just it because there are so many points that you can bring up and so many things to yep. think about. And I think it's, uh, it's why I love having these long form discussions because you, it's like, it's not hard. You start like thinking about the stuff and you're like, but what if, but what if, you know, right. is it yep. really benefiting? And it's, I, I, I do not think the risk is worth the, the, the risk is worth the reward. I don't, because don't there's know. so many, like there was somebody that called into that show um, and made up the great points. Like, well, why, you know, why, why Lake, you know, you basically hit it on the head, follow the money. And oh, it's, yeah. it yeah. is, it is the least expensive place to operate them because of the fact they don't have to pay somebody to have them there. I mean, it's, it's the simplest yep. answer. And it, sure. and I think that's oh, yeah. the thing it, that, it, it, that that's the thing that I've come to over the last two years 
with everything that we've all been living through is that you have to just take a step back and look at what is the simple reasons why these things are happening. And it's right there in front of you. If you don't have to pay, if I'm a landowner and I don't have to pay to put something on my property and I'm going to get paid, well, then that's a win-win, you know, and you're, you can deal with the long-term effects of that. I have friends, I have family that have, that have renewable energy, whether it be solar panels or wind turbines on their property. And that's their prerogative. That's their decision. And if they're smart, if they plan, um, you know, they have exit strategies in place so that when those companies are ready to move out of town and they don't want to renew their contracts or they, there's either money's been put into some sort of a fund from the money they've been making so that they can have those things removed um, or they can handle however that exit strategy is. But what's our exit strategy in Lake Erie? Um, yeah. You know, there is, it, I, there's, it's not there. And the no, fact not at all. You have to no, get an, just, you have to have an environmental study to, to and there, do there almost been, uh, anything, right? Been, uh, and that right. that should just make people's skin crawl because. Well, here, here, and, and while you're on that point, not to interrupt you, but mm-hmm. it, it's um, the, I, I mentioned the uh, the uh, the project that New York State put up for the Common Turn, which was on the end of Donnelly's Wall. Um, a, a a real nice lady who's a good friend of ours works for the DEC. Her love and her project are the common turn. Now, if you fish in the Buffalo Harbor ever and you use a minnow, you will have them over your head and they'll just poop all over your boat because they want those minnows. They, 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 they lay their eggs on this wall and New York state propagates these, these, um, these eggs to keep this turn from going. Well, this has been Connie's project for a long time. How strong was the project? Remember a few years ago, they wanted to build a new peace bridge. Mm -hmm. Well, that peace bridge project got scrapped because of the common turn because they didn't want them flying in the wires of the new bridge because the bridge proposal was going to be like a wire bridge. And they thought they would fly into that. New York state will not let Connie be part of our program because it's part of the DEC and the DEC is part of New York state government and they don't want them to talk about it. So she can't come out and say, yeah, these, common turns might fly into the turbines and kill themselves along with the eagles and all the geese, the geese population, the monarch butterfly here. There's even a little side note. Think about this one, the monarch butterfly. If you fish on Lake Erie and, and you're in, let me say like late July, August, you'll start seeing literally hundreds of monarch butterflies flying across that lake every day. Do you, you, you think that a monarch butterfly is going to be able to withstand the force of a turbine spinning out Lake Erie? They're going to destroy that population of butterflies. Yeah. Where's the Autobahn Society or the, the Butterfly Society should be with us saying, hey, we, we don't want that either. So these are the people we're trying to reach all these small groups. Yeah. Um, if you fish along the shore of Lake Erie, eagles are now... They're not even like, wow, there's an eagle. It's like, oh, there's an eagle. You know, you yeah. don't even think about it anymore because there's so many. Think they're not going to fly into them? I'll guarantee you. I've heard, I've heard rumors that they don't let anybody walk under the the turbines that are at where the old Bethlehem steel plant is because of the dead birds that are laying at the bottom of those mm-hmm. of those um, turbines. Yeah, and yeah. that's something that I I often wonder about um, out here where we are, you know, it's, it's, you can't, in my experience is my direct experience from living near them. And, you know, out here, we're in the middle of nowhere, you know, nobody's, you know, these farm roads that are now, you know, put in as access roads to get to the, to the turbines for maintenance and that, you know, you can just drive your four wheel or your snowmobile or your truck right to them and just go walk around them. You know, there's nobody out there shooing you away. Um, And I can't say that I've seen, that and I think what happens is is that you hear like that point you just made um, about how the the potential threat this could be to different you know insects or birds and their migratory yep. patterns bats. yeah bats, bats. but but yeah. out, out here you know it's a it's a geographic thing so where I right. am there may not be a flyway there may not be no. that concentration of birds and out here lake that you erie have. Is a flyway right lake erie not only is it a flyway but the, the the niagara river system upper lower river is like the number one place in the nation for for arctic birds old squaws which now have a new name long-tailed duck whatever <laughs> all of these all of these um 
ducks come in this area to 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 uh, winter because it's you know it's it's colder but it's not freezing like the Arctic is. So it's um, it just uh, you know it's just a, another little you know uh, notch along the way of why this is a bad thing. Yeah. And just a real quick point too, back to the union thing. You know these all these union guys. Uh, think that they're going. It's going to be great for their union deal. Look what union jobs did to downtown Buffalo. It destroyed downtown Buffalo for a few temporary jobs in putting that rapid transit system in. Buffalo was never the same after that. What? Which? Which project is that? Or- it was. The, it's before you were born. Yeah. It was. Uh, it was the, uh, the 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 train system that runs through uh, through Buffalo. And, uh, you know, runs from what UB to uh, downtown mm-hmm. and they, they tore up main street, you know, it was going to be a temporary thing. And it went on for, for a while and, uh, literally destroyed businesses in downtown. Yeah. Um, and that, and so, you know, back to the, it, that's an interesting point and it, it's history, right? You have to look back yep. at history and learn from yep. it. Um, short-term gain, long-term pain. Um, yeah, the, sir, uh, that's great. the, uh, the whole thing we have seen just in my last five, six years of watching 10 years, whatever, of just watching how the world turns and how the world operates. We've seen so many projects, you know, get derailed and get side, you know, side tracked or just basically shut down because of environmental studies of simple, simple things. Yep. And we've already laid out a, a laundry list of, of things to be looked at and studied and thought about and maybe pump the brakes a little bit and say, what would the impacts to these things be if we, if we did a project like this and, and it needs to be done. And I'm, I'm calling on organizations that I belong to, you know, one of which I've reached out to over the weekend to tap on them backcountry hunters and anglers. You know, this is, this is the time to put up or shut up. And to me, organizations that, that are, that say that they are to support and keep things wild protect habitat and access and and keep things the way they were or make them better you have to put your money where your mouth is and i'm i'm challenging bha i'm a member and i i want to see him act i want to see people get behind this and if you know what if you're if you're for it i want to understand why you're for it and let's have let's have a, a conscious decision for this but impacting in impacting the environment especially this is this is this is something i was thinking about over the weekend this is public land this is public water yeah, this is this yeah, is yeah. not this is not the dairy farmer on the hills property who he's nope. making a decision nope. with his property that's nope. his prerogative this is our prerogative this is the this people's is decision you know you, you you mentioned about letting your people know let your voice be heard when I had my TV show, I had the pleasure of interviewing Ted Nugent three times. Oh, cool. The, the Nuge is outspoken like nobody I've ever heard before, but a, but a, a, a hunter, fisherman, outdoorsman. So at the end of that first interview, and that was 1992 was the first time that I did that. At the end of the interview, he looks at me and he goes, Jim, are you political? And I went, no, Ted, not really. You know, I, I don't want to ruffle any feathers. Kim, you owe it to your blood brothers and blood sisters to stand up for their rights, to hunt, shoot, trap, fish, and enjoy the outdoors. Your silence is a vote for the other side. Mm-hmm. That stuck with me so much that within a year's time, I had a pistol permit. I had bought a shotgun. I started hunting because I didn't even hunt at the time. And I realized that then I passed that that love of the outdoors and, and hunting with my son and my, my all my kids too. And they are, they are vocal. They are vocal along with their old man now, because truly, if you don't speak out, you will get bowled over. And right now it's the time we're putting up a billboard. We have lawn signs. If anybody wants to get a lawn sign, have them go to the, you know, citizens against wind turbines on Lake Erie, go there. We'll get you a lawn sign. Uh, we just need to, to, to have it, you know, uh, impact the public because politicians don't want to be opposed on something like this. Hochul is going to be running for, you know, a re-election pretty soon. She doesn't want this as a stain from Western New York. She needs these votes around here. So does Peoples and Ryan and all these people who are just the absolute hypocrites saying they don't know anything about it. Yeah. Then why put on your campaign pieces that you will provide renewable energy jobs? What are renewable energy jobs? Solar panels and turbines. Yeah. That's what they are. Yeah. So if you think that it's something else, he's a liar. I'll call it right to his face. He's a liar. 
And for for our representatives to say that they're not aware of it is a slap in your face and my oh, face and yeah, everybody else. Who, stupid. Yeah. Yeah. I, I don't. I never heard anything about it. Right. Yeah. I'm, I'm on the. I'm on TV. I'm on the radio. You think your 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 staff doesn't hear that and report yeah. to you yeah. that that's going on here? The, you know, the, there's a several local politicians that have been great. D. Pietro, Chris Jacobs. Uh, um, uh, Borello, a lot of these guys are on board, but you know, it's, it, it's like, you know, one group against the other. We, we, our voices must be way louder than yeah. theirs. Yeah. And let's just stay on that for a minute. Is that we have right now, we, I feel like we are in a turning point with a, with a laundry list of things in this country. Um, so many people, like you and I have been silent, haven't said what, what our piece is because we don't want the pushback. We don't want uh-huh. somebody to say, Billy, you're crazy. Yeah. Billy, you're a conspiracy yeah. theorist, yada, yada, yada. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm done, and I'm done with it. I'm, I'm done you. with hiding. I, you know, I, but you have to present yourself in a logical, you know, yes. keep your emotions in check. You have to because yeah. as soon as that, don't stoop to that low. Let's be. Let's right. think about what, what the long-term impacts of these things and you know it's being talked a lot about on the vaccine side of things and on the way that we're handling COVID it's it's really my my opinions and my side on this whole thing is that we have to look at the long-term effect on our kids and what is happening all these decisions that everybody is making you if you start looking at it you don't see the logical decision making that's behind these things and they're looking at the short-term decisions that are impacting stuff that we don't even know the long-term impacts of this. And nobody's even giving a second thought because it's just we have to do this right now and we're going to do it, and that's what we're going to do because we have to have an immediate resolve to this problem. And then you, you just don't think about what those long-term impacts are. And, it's, right. uh, and I think that's a, that's a two-sided thing. You have people that, are, that have money to be made or have power to be gained – from making decisions. But then on the other side of it, you have people that like myself, who I feel like I, over the last several years have really started being, be, be, being coming aware of this stuff. But when you're young and idealistic and you're educated oh, about sure. all of these yeah. things, you know, when you you're told that this is going to make things better, you have this, this rosy outlook on the way things are going to be. But then sure. you start physically seeing some of this stuff and seeing from all across the world, you see these reports from, you know, let's just talk about the clean energy. You see these reports on questions about, is this having an impact on our health from living next to this monstrosity of a energy generating piece of equipment? You know, what's the, what's the long-term impact? And we're learning that as we go, but do we yep. really want to do that? You know, so quickly, you know, you put these timelines out there and it just seems half baked. So much yep. of this just seems half baked and it, and and what they're not telling you is the actual numbers. And I think that's, oh. I want to get, you have some people on your, in your committee or your, your yeah, group. Yeah. I'll send them over to you. We have, we have guys who are, you know, I mean, they're just, I, I'm a fisherman. Yeah. So I'm a fisherman with a big mouth. And I'm a hunter passionate. with a big mouth. Yeah, right. and, I, and I'm passionate about it, but we have a guy named Mike. Mike will give you the dollars and cents and, and alternatives and what I would another guy named Rich Davenport. Rich has more facts in, in, in a paragraph than I have in my entire life. Um, I, I can send you them, get them on here, and they will blow you away with their information. Um, I'm kind of the tip of the spear because I've been around for a long time, and I kind of get everybody going and, and, and you know, uh, fired up about it because I can get fired up about it, and I, I want to get those that, that knowledge out to the public because knowledge is, is power. And if you can refute the fear mongering, all of like, like you said about COVID, about uh, renewable energy, <gasps> the kids are being taught in school. Oh my God, you can't have an electric car. We're going to die. We're going to die. The polar caps are melting. We're going to die. You know, you even think about that polar caps are melting. All these billionaires that are building condos on Miami beach. If they're worried about the water levels rising, they wouldn't be building them on, on Miami beach. Believe me. So, so we have, we, you know, you're, you're, 
you're um, fighting against, once again, City Hall, and you're fighting against propaganda that's being put in the kids' heads. And then the kids came home, you know, will come home and, Daddy, stop destroying the earth by driving your diesel truck. You know, <laughs> yeah, so, uh, you know, it's off the point. It's in the weeds a little bit. Yeah. But that's that's what we're fighting. We're fighting, you know, misconception and, and, and misinformation. Yeah. And it's funny. I, I had a conversation with a friend of mine um, who I'll be having on the show and he's a, he is, works for a, um, works for a conservation organization that's very pro timber management. And him and I were talking the other day about, uh, um, a, I brought this up to him because he's a member of the same organization, BHA that I am. And I just was, kind of picking his brain. I'm like, do you think this is something that we sh- as an organization should bring to light and should be talking about? And he was like, dude, absolutely. This makes no sense. Yeah. But he brought up yeah. the point about college because he went to college for environmental, um, oh, I don't know if it was environmental oh. science or it was, um, yeah. or maybe forestry, might've been forestry, but he, yep. he went to school for that. And he's like, he goes reflecting back now, he's in his late twenties. He goes the first two years of my education, he's like, I was just being indoctrinated that, oh, that it's bad, oh, that, absolutely. that a chainsaw is a bad thing. And he goes, yep. it wasn't until, and I don't want to botch his story. I will, you know, probably talk about it on here, but, um, you know, his, he's like, it wasn't until I think his third year, he had a professor that totally threw a curveball at everybody in the classroom and like kids' minds were blown, you know? And, yeah. but it's like, as you grow up and as you get more worldly and you start to see the way that things do, and if you actually go out and do these things, right. You and I both know if you go actually go out in the lake and you spend 40 years on a boat, you see how things change. You see how things can get better if, sure. you, if things are handled properly. If you're a sure. hunter or if you're a landowner and you are maintaining your forests and you're selectively cutting and you're trying to improve habitat, you see everything do better. You see the deer, the turkeys, the rabbits, the pheasants, the yeah. bugs, everything, you name it. Everything improves if you are actively involved in that process. But then we go and do things like this where it's like, oh, my God, climate change is the biggest challenge that we have in the world. We have to do dramatic things to stop it. There's no proof. There's literally no proof that all of these things that we're talking about doing to completely change our environment, yep. there's no proof that any of this is actually going to stop climate change. Climate, there's no change is inevitable. It's going to happen. There's, yep. you know, there's, there was an ice age. Things were not frozen before. Then they froze and then it goes, do we yep. have, do we, is there things that we can do? And this is where yep. I think it's, it's being, uh, being conscientious about this and realistic is that there are things that we can do. Renewable energy is not all bad. It's not bad no, to have solar panels. Done. It's not bad to have wind yeah. turbines, but you have to be smart about how you do it because you can, you can have, greater risk than reward in doing a lot of this stuff. And it, and, that, yep. and that's why this has me so fired up because when I heard wind turbines in Lake Erie, I'm like, this just makes <clears throat> shit for sense. It doesn't make yeah. any sense. You, you know, as so many people were, were, uh, we've had, uh, these yard signs were, we're actually changing them a little bit because people think they're all going to be all along the shore of Lake Erie. Mm-hmm. So we're changing to put like a water symbol on there. They are not going to be on the shore. They're going to be down the center of Lake Erie maybe anywhere from two miles, two, three miles off to the Canadian line mm-hmm. to seven or eight miles offshore. You're not going to be able to see them. That's what people say. You're, you'll be able, be able to see them. You know what? We, we You'll love this one. We had somebody, and I, I one of our group came in, and they actually had like a um, – on a discussion, it was a, the phone. You get the phone calls with Dicerta and all the all the groups that are for it and everything else. They said, "Well, listen, we can come out to your house if you live along the lake, and we can put up a tree or a bush off of your property so that it blocks that turbine from your view of the lake." Oh I, I mean, you talk about absurd, you uh, unbelievable the, the threats to navigation. Somebody even Bowerly, Tom Bowerly, who's been you know we're on a show even set a thousand foot turbine in the, uh, in that, that high, that's almost a threat to, to aerial, to, uh, you know, airplanes and helicopters and whatnot. It's a threat to navigation. We're hearing from the, um, uh, coast guard and from the, uh, Homeland security that the radar systems with those, uh, all those big towers out there mm-hmm. that, that your radar is not going to work properly because it's going to be bouncing off them and stuff. Yeah. So, you know, it's, it's, it's just, 
it's just a million little things. It's, it's, just, it's, uh, it's, it's like, a million it's like little things. Like, yeah. like playing Jenga, isn't it? Where you pull the little blocks out. Right. You know, we're pulling, we're pull, we're pulling all their little blocks out, and eventually that thing's gonna fall because the public outcry is getting stronger all the time. Yeah, and um, and uh, yeah, talking about the radar, you know, I think that's a that's something that I don't. I, I pay a ton of attention to weather. You're a fisherman. Uh, I guarantee that you're watching the weather all the damn time. All the time. But if all, any, all anybody listening, if you, if it doesn't matter where you are in the country, you turn on the rate, you turn on the radar. If you're watching the weather service and they show New York, you can see on the radar all the time where the, where the wind farms are, because like out here in Wyoming County, it always looks like there's precipitation even on a beautiful sunny day, that's just the radar picking up the the rotation of the wind turbines. Yeah, um, so it's it's just you know not that that's a bad thing that you can see where they are, but it's it's a factor. Yeah. And when you're talking about a when you're talking about a, a a line between two countries where we have a border, that's something to seriously be looked at. You know, that's security. Oh, yeah. That's national security thoughts. So Canada doesn't want them in the water. You know, Canada being the socialist country they are, you would think that they'd be jumping on this. They've got a, they've got a lot of uh, uh, turbines along. I think it's like 401, mm-hmm. and because uh, uh, I took a, a, road, a trip to Detroit last year and I went along 401, and they were all over the place. Two years ago, actually, yeah. before COVID. And um, when you're out in Lake Erie, say you run, run out of Cataraugus Creek, which is down kind of near the Dunkirk area and around in there, uh, Silver Creek. You get out to the to the Canadian line, you can see those turbines like crazy. And guess what? They're all like almost 15 miles away yeah. from where you are from that point. So if you, th- you think they're not going to be an eyesore on the lake, which is something we've really not focused on a lot because, you know, uh, a visual is not really a bad thing, but it's that it's that under the surface kind of thing, you know, still water runs deep or a duck looks like he's not working real hard when he's swimming. His feet are going like crazy. Well, just imagine underneath the water and that turbine sitting on all that pollution and tearing up that bottom of that jet plow. Yeah. Those are really, really high points. Yep. And that's it. And and I think that's, that's really what I wanted to do with our discussion here is just highlight, highlight this issue. And we're going to talk more about it. And I want to get more, you know, people who are experts on certain pieces of not just this, yep. but other um, environmental things. I think that's important. You know, this time of year, this is a, this is primarily a deer hunting podcast. Um, but this time yep. of year, I think it's it's a time to, you know, kind of hit the reset, think about some things that are also important in life. And uh, this is stuff that interests me, and I hope that it interests the listeners because – um, this, this is something that's important to everybody, you know, whether you yep. ever plan to go fishing on Lake Erie or not, um, and, and spend go boating or swimming or anything or drink the water that comes from it. I think it's something that you should be behind. You should be, well, I'm not going to tell you what you should think, but I think you should be aware of it and you make up your own yep. decisions there on, you go. on the make way it should decisions. be. Yeah. Yep. And, and I think that's, 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 that's a message for everybody on everything is, you sure. know, look into stuff. Don't just see what you see in a in an ad on the news and, and just take it for, for, you know, being a hundred percent above board, you know, I, watching the bills game last night, the amount of commercials sponsored by Pfizer and the amount of commercials where they're telling us that we have to do these things to our kids. Um, and a really homely quarterback on a whole bunch of them. We should get him off of there. Oh my God. That's what I said to Sarah. I'm like, what the hell? I'm like every single commercial break, I got to see Mahomes again. You know, I know. It's sad. The kid's, the kid's impressive though. I, no matter how bad yeah. you want to hate on him, he's, yeah. he's an incredible quarterback, but, yeah. um, so I guess a couple things I, I made note on. I just want to make sure I hit on the stuff that, um, let's see here. Um, a, an interesting point. Uh, that I've that I heard somebody call into the show was you know these small towns um, not feeling like they can they can stop any of this um, and th- I think that's a little bit of a different situation than what we have here being that this is this is public water this is something that is yeah. not a single town this is a very unique situation um, but I think something to be said for that is you know we we had a and I don't know if this if this project has kind of hit the brakes or not, but I've heard nothing about it. There was a big proposed uh, solar project here um, in Sheldon, and it was right before it was early 2020, right before um, the pandemic hit. We had there was a town hall meeting, the first time that the public was really introduced to this plan uh, that they wanted to put like hundreds of acres of solar 
uh, here in Sheldon, you know, tagging it on to what we have with the, with the wind farm. And, uh, and it was, it was eye opening to me. And that's kind of when my, when my page turned, um, in my thoughts on a lot of this stuff. Um, not that I'm totally, and not that I'm against the renewable energy, but what's the impact to the landowner? Um, and, and it's a, it's a tough, the, the exact moment where it changed for me was having a discussion. Um, I was at the town hall, you know, going around the head, you know, had, it was kind of just an open room. They had representatives from the solar company there. Um, and they had, you know, poster boards up and stuff like with information about the whole thing. And so people were just walking around, interacting, talking, and I met some neighbors, um, neighbors of my in-laws, um, and they don't own a lot of property, but they border several farmers that own a lot of property. And they brought up a point to me, uh, that will forever stick with me is that they, we're not in support of this because there, there was no financial gain for them to be had because they don't own enough property for these companies to have any interest to work with them. They own, you know, 10, 12 acres, if that, but the neighbors own hundreds of acres and have wide open fields. So this is ideal for them. But that, that person who doesn't own enough property lives on this little hill here that looks over this beautiful valley and they wake up every morning and look out their front door. They get that incredible landscape Now, if a project like that was to move forward and that farmer next to them, not saying that they would go into this or not, but if they did, they could have all those fields filled with solar panels for 30 plus years. And that person's view is ruined. And there's that, that, that sobered me for a minute. You know, it made me take a step back and say, okay, like a lot of this stuff is good. Like a lot of these things that we're trying to find different ways to, to produce energy, to do this stuff. Like I'm for that. Let's try to move forward. Let's try to find new ways. But then on the flip side, it's like some of this stuff, like that point, it takes, it takes a step back. I don't know how else to say it. Like somebody who cherishes, they've worked their entire life to have that home with that view, with that property. And it could be changed overnight over some dollars that somebody else could make. Right. You know, and that changed my perspective on all of this. And it sure. really changed me thinking about how all of this goes moving forward. So the the point, the the note that I made was, you know, small towns feeling like they don't have a voice. I, I, I don't know for a fact, but I, I haven't heard a word about that project. And I really think it's probably because a lot of people in our town, including the farmers who had a lot of money to make from this, looked at that and said, this is not what we want to do. You know, we, right. we do want to feed our cattle and that's, they have massive fields where they grow hay and they grow corn and they feed their cows, which in turn feed us. And yeah. if they fill those fields full of solar panels, they're not going to be able to do that. So, you know, that sure. small communities, if they, if they come together and I think people approach things in a, in a way of talking about what are the cost benefits of doing this long term. I think you you know you come to what yep. the best decision is for the for the community, but you got any yep. thoughts on that? Well, it's just organizing and speaking in one voice because politicians listen when people complain. Look at Biden's numbers are so low right now because everybody's complaining about gas and uh, shortages and inflation and whatnot. If if all of the people in your small community speak as one voice politicians aren't going to let it happen and they're not going to let this happen either. We are just organizing everybody that we possibly can. I bend every ear that I possibly can and tell them about this. I had one lady the other day was, um, uh, you know, Oh, but it's just so peaceful again. She was like, Oh, but they're just so tranquil. It makes me feel so good. And I say, she goes, but it's just in the lake. It's not going to hurt anything. And that's when I explained to her about look under the surface. And she was like, Oh my God, I never even thought about that part. Mm -hmm. So knowledge is key. Education is key. um, And, and just getting the word out, combining those efforts, one loud voice. If every person along Lake Erie, and there's some affluent folks, if you think, uh, you know, living along the shore of Lake Erie, we have we have several very influential people who have commercials on television all the time, are a part of our group, and that they their property taxes are outrageous. You're talking about thirty five to forty thousand dollars a year to live on Lake Erie with like a hundred fifty to two hundred foot uh, 
front on your, your property, you, th- you think your property value is not going to go down if you were lo- looking at all those, those turbines out there? You know, m- money speaks and politicians quiver when, when the, the opposition is against them. Yep. Um, the uh, other points I wanted to make here, uh, how far along, you know, are the plans? And, you know, do you feel like we're... Yeah, nobody knows. Nobody okay. knows or will say they have any idea. So uh, wh- whoever has the, but, but there must be something because if Hochul is making phone calls and Crystal Peoples is making phone calls and Sean Ryan doesn't know anything about it, uh, that, then you know something's in the works. Uh, we, we've heard all kinds, it's, it's, the company is called Diamond Wind and Mitsubishi is the, is the parent uh, company. And you want to hear, so you'll love this one, it just came to mind. When this first came to us about, it'll be three years in May, uh, the, the company came in, Diamond Wind came in, and the lead person on the, um, uh, from, the, uh, from her uh, pr- company, advertising company or whatever it was, uh, was her name was Patricia Lynch. And she was very outspoken and very nice and everything else. And one of the guys from Diamond Wind says, you know, you as a fisherman, you're going to love these because you can pull right up to them and you'll be able to have your customers fish because the fish hang around there and stuff. And I said, you're a liar. And he goes, oh, no, no, I'm not. And I said, buddy, I said, over my dead body, will you put those things like, you? those are some pretty strong words, mister. I said, well, stop lying to people and telling them they can fish next to turbines because Homeland Security is not going to let you do that. So what do we find out about Patricia Lynch? Patricia Lynch was the mistress to Sheldon Silver, who was the Speaker of the House of New York State Assembly and Senate. He's in jail. Mm, so I thought that name sounded people, familiar. Yeah. Yeah. Who, who, who do we hang around with? We hang around with these people who come in and they're trying to screw us, brother. So just to put plain and simple, we're, we're pay attention to what's going on. Yeah. Yeah. And that's, and I guess that's the, that kind of dovetails into a couple of the notes I made that I wanted to wrap on, make yep. sure we hit on before I was, I wrote down Sierra club and it just, yep. it just makes shit for sense. Right. <laughs> like a, a, an organization that when I, when you hear Sierra club, you think, Oh, they want like, they want pristine nature, keep things, yep. peace, yep. hugs, loves flowers. Yep. That's what you think of. And then you, so I've in my, in my work life, I have seen the Sierra club, um, they're very active. So in what I do for a living, I sell vehicles and, um, there's a big push right now, obviously for EV, uh, electric vehicles. And so this is another reason why I've become so passionate about this because I'm becoming more educated in our infrastructure and our system that we have currently in not just New York state, but the country and the, and the, the precedents or the expectations that are being laid out for, how soon we're going to get to zero emission vehicles in our fleets, especially fleets. You know, when we're talking urinized vehicles, um, you know, we can transition fairly easy to an electric vehicle in a lot of ways. You know, you're going to might need a little more power for your house. You might, you're going to use more electric, but um, you know, that's, it's, that's, you can grow towards that. But when you start talking about fleets, the amount of power that's going to be needed for these fleets, it's, it's like staggering. And, you know, we had a presentation uh, that we participated in, our company did. And and these guys are experts. They, like, they literally are in the business of helping uh, fleets and organizations understand what that transition will look like to implement an electric fleet. And well, they're, not, they're not against this. They're, they make money off of, off of organizations going down this road. But the math that they lay out and the, and the fact of, how much we actually need power wise to do the things that they're asking and knowing that we're getting rid of the most reliable power generation plants across this country and in nuclear, especially here in New York, you know, we're getting rid of those reliable power sources, but yet we're going to be demanding more power than ever. Again, question like, okay, so how, with what, you know, solar and wind are not, guaranteed to give you the power you need on any daily basis the one day they produce too much one day they don't produce produce enough where do you store where do you store that doesn't even stay here it goes to new york city right well it goes new york city that that's a point but to me it's like wherever the hell the power goes what do you do you know it's not you you're not guaranteed to have that power and you need that power to run things so Yep. These these are questions you have to ask ask yourself. But then you go back to the Sierra Club point I'm making. 
the I've seen letters written um, ahead of school board uh, school budget votes. I've seen letters written to the editor in the Syracuse paper um, year after year. Same person who's on a, a chairperson, I think, or somebody who's high up in in the New York State Sierra Club, writing letters demanding that that voters vote down the school budget because they're not proposing to buy electric vehicles. And that person has no, they, that, that person from the Sierra club, that is a purely political statement. Sure. There is no knowledge base behind that. There is no answer for a district today to put an electric school bus in their fleet. They can't do it today. I could sell right. you, I could sell you one, but you don't have the infrastructure. You don't have the charging sure. station. Right. Your no. district is not ready for that. So you have people in these organizations that are demanding that people don't support a district or don't support a town or or that we put solar or put wind turbines in a great lake without looking at the environmental studies from an environmental group that's pushing this. They don't even understand the true impact of doing these things. And that's where I, I just I challenge people to look at the people who are behind these pushes and you know, it really is the, it's the politicians for this, just this project in particular, it seems like it's the politicians, it's the, the wind company, um, the, you know, the diamond wind. And then you've got yep. Sierra club that, that those are the ones that have stepped up and they're the ones that seem to be pushing this forward. Why, why is the Sierra club doing that? Who are the board members? Look into all these things. I think it's something that sure. all of us, oh, yeah. as all the money, as citizens, I'll, I'm going yeah. to send you the name of somebody, and he will explain about following the money. Yeah, and you will be blown away by it. Yeah, and I, I just, again, it goes. That's everything we've been dealing with over the last two years, and it's yep. you're not. If you're sitting here listening to this and saying, "Billy, you're a freaking kook," I'm not a kook. I'm not. No, I, I'm, not. I'm somebody no. who's. I'm trying to be rational. I'm trying to think about the why. Like, why is this happening? Why are we doing yep. this? And then when you hear discussions about the money that's being made. It's like hmm, money, crazy money. money. And, and you, Nyserta. Yeah. you'll hear that name Nyserta a bunch of times, follow the money. Yeah. And just, just take a step back and think about it because yep. in the end, it's not going to get any less expensive for you and I, uh, it's nope. not going to save us money on our energy bills. Nope. It's not, not going to do it. You might nope. get a, you might get a tax break for a short period of time, but that will go away. And right. then you're left holding the bag, trying to figure out how to pay for this and nothing is getting less expensive we're all seeing that in our daily life. And once this is like another opinion of mine is that once they know they can charge you that much for something and they can continue doing it, it's probably not going to go back. If they know that they can charge you $60,000 for a pickup truck that you used to be able to get for 30 grand 10 years ago, they're not going to yep. go back to selling it to you for 30 grand. No, they're not. It's just not going to mm-hmm. happen. And right. you can go out and buy an electric vehicle, you know, and you can buy it for less than you can buy a gas or diesel powered vehicle. But the only reason that is is because there's subsidized money going to paying for that vehicle, and that is coming out of your and I's pockets. So it's just think about this stuff, people. That's all I'm saying. I'm not saying that I'm I'm somebody who is not against this stuff. I'm not against it. But let's just think rationally about yep. what we're doing because guys like Jim are fighting a fight because they see the re- direction this is going. You will never see the end of of this journey but you want your kids and your grandkids right. and your great grandkids to have a better earth and a better environment and that beautiful lake to enjoy yep. as they grow. And yep. we all, you know, us 30 year olds need to, need to start, you know, being part of oh, this. Absolutely. As well. so. Yep. so that's it. Those are the things I wanted to hit on. Um, is there anything else that we didn't touch on or anything you want to say in closing? No, not really. Just a, you know, a, many voices get it done. And like Ted said, your silence is a vote for the other side. If you don't speak up or make a phone call or put a lawn sign on, you know, uh, we, 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 they fought me a long time for lawn signs. And I said, they make people aware, you know, you just see it. What, what, what's with that blade with a big no around it in Lake Erie. Um, just get, get a little passion. Think about your kids, about your future. Think about how the destruction of a lake, the pollution, the the destroying of that environment. If you're a fisherman, or you're a bass fisherman, you found those great areas. They're not going to cut through the sunken ships, 2,000 sunken ships that are graveyards. If they're not doing any 
environmental impact studies and know where those ships are and, and lay and lay a turbine down on top of a shipwreck that the divers have been on again. That's what we're trying to get the divers on board. We're trying to get everybody, duck hunters, uh, fishermen, uh, divers, uh, uh, boaters, just and, and people who, who care about what's going on. So, you know, yep. that, that's, that's, that's what we're trying to do. So we really, really appreciate being on here with you, you know, uh, uh, even, uh, you know, if it reaches a few voices or, or a 10,000, uh, that that's what we need. We need one at a time. So, yeah, no, I appreciate that, Jim. And, uh, and again, what's the name of the group, you guys, primarily the groups on Facebook. So what's yep. the name of that? Citizens against wind turbines in Lake Erie. So if you look it up there, there's a bunch of people on it. You can go on there and get all kinds of information. Yep. So I appreciate you guys doing that. And, uh, Aside from all of the all of these discussions, I uh, I wish you a good winter and uh, preparation for a, a good spring on the lake. Thanks, man. I appreciate so, it. Yep. Stay well. We'll talk soon. Okay. All thanks. right. Go Bills. Yeah. Go. Next. Year. It's all right. No, it's okay. We can still say that we got a good team. <laughs> yeah. All right. Thanks, Jim. See ya. Thanks.